Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Today, I have a special guest. Hey, Murph, say hello. Uh-oh. Whoa. Oh, I was muted. Okay. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We are, have a very, very exciting uh, Kagi 6.0 finals here between Fabulousing and Ashitaka. I think it'll be a great, great series of games. I know the um, Ashitaka and Quickdraws match before this uh, was was quite epic. The last one we saw as well was two very good games. And I think this year, this season, we will it will deliver exactly the same with two, with hopefully three great games of Keyforge. Absolutely. And what are we playing today? Adaptive best of three. So you bring your deck. You each play your own deck, you swap decks, you play the opponent's deck, and then if the same deck wins, you go to chains, and you bid for that third deck with chains. So, really great players in your whole um, league. T tell us a little bit about Kagi and, and why you decided to take take charge of it. Yeah, so Kagi is something that Fighting Walloon had started a, a while back, and the Kagi stands for is K A G I, which is Keyforge's Garfield intended. Now, it, the point of that of that statement is that there's a there's a nice quote from Richard Garfield that the sum in the summation of it is instead of trying to pick the deck that has the best chance of winning, you just pick a deck and try and win with it. And the spirit of of adaptive, which I think embodies the real spirit of Keyforge, is that every deck can win in adaptive. Right? You have three games. You play the you play Archon Standard first game one. Then you play reversal, and then you bid chains on it. And the chains are there to hopefully equalize any disparity between the decks, which obviously there is with any deck generation game. And so with that, it creates this wonderful, wonderful experience where no matter what deck you bring, no matter the size of your collection, as long as you have a deck that is that you enjoy playing, that you're familiar with, you have a good shot of getting to a final of a league like this. And so I think Kagi is a great great league to enjoy casually and competitively and just have fun with i love that and honestly that is so key for just being able to take a deck and and just play competitively with it um learn its ins and out to to be able to uh win a, a massive event like this and this event is huge it, it's got so many good players in it and let's talk about the two that we have here today, Fabulousine and Ashitaka. And kind of one of the things that you said reminds me of something that Fabulousine said was he doesn't have what he feels are a lot of kind of Archon competitive decks, but he feels he can be competitive in this event with a deck that he knows really well. And he's shown that. So it, that, that's what's so cool about, about Adaptive. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, um, and they're rather they're rather new to the league as well. They their first one was Kagi Five, which is just the last one, and they and they top four that one. So in two, in just their in their first two seasons, they have done incredibly well getting to where they are. And you know, I think that's a it's obviously a testament to their skill, and uh, obviously it's a testament to their to their deck knowledge. Absolutely, and um, they they mentioned that they've been playing since day one of uh, of uh, Coda. So you know, big into the game. Been, been playing from the start. Uh, love the idea since it was announced. Been playing a lot with, of course, you know, friends and um, during the early days. And then, of course, on the Crucible when the pandemic hit. But not a lot of kind of in real life play. And I definitely um, <laughs> relate to that. Um, but obviously, you can. this is what also I think is so great about the online community. Leagues like this is that it gives an opportunity for people to play and, and still become competitive, even if they don't have a lot of in-real-life opportunities. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we have such a wonderful online community that's very inclusive, very welcoming, and very friendly. Um, and I, I think uh, this league has been no different. Excellent. And moving over to Ashitaka, um, also a uh, kind of superstar within Kagi, been to the finals before, uh, yep. where Quick Draw took him out, um, just a, a few seasons ago, from from Paris, and a very strong player that's been very good throughout um, 
a kind of a p pillar of the AFK community, which is a French Keyforge Association. Yes, I think they're uh, they're a bit of a legend within Kagi for sure, and uh, they they um, humbly take the eight. They actually they're they're eighth on the Keyforge online rank for 2022, which is amazing. Um, which is amazing with 26 points out of four from four tournaments. Awesome. So the the French Keyforge Association is uh, is a force to be reckoned with, and always has been. And I think uh, you know we have a. Uh, Hopefully the Ashitaka can represent them well again here. Excellent. Well, I see now that they have the game set up. Yep, we're in. Okay. I think we go. I'll give them a go ahead. Yeah, go for it. And we'll switch over Perfect. to that. We have some other superstars of Kagi in the chat. Quick draw, not tonight. Hello, nice to see you. Always doing very well within Kagi. Not tonight, won it last season. Quick draw, run it a few seasons ago. So nice to see you all. And let's see, did mine not? Okay, there we go. And thank you everyone for coming out and watching this stream. It's awesome having so many people here and uh, having some uh, some Keyforge friends while we uh, watch some great adaptive. Awesome. Good luck and have fun. All right, so, so let's see good. what they brought. So two very interesting decks here, it seems. Both mass mutations. Yep. Both with logos. And both have Star Alliance and logos. Perfect. One, I think um, Ashitaka's is a Dark Amber Vault deck. It looks inc an incredibly quick. Let me look at Ashitaka's here. Yep. An incredibly quick logos there. Um, as well as with a uh, very nice start here from Ashitaka with a Val Jericho and a Odd Clod off the Val Jericho trigger, which helped take out the... Um, wow, this is a blazing start for Ashitaka there. Yeah, Fabulescent had played out Kronos and Ashitaka, yeah. Captain yeah. Val Jericho's so, turn one is always huge. Yeah, and that they, they were able to take out the Kronos for, with the double damage pip on the Odd Clod off the Val Jericho and the Subdue. So, quite a good start. Definitely. So, how can... What uh, tools that Fabulousing have here that he can respond to that Jericho? Well, they have three look over there. So, this is um, this is the deck that Fabulousing brought in their last match against... Um... It is escaping me. Um, Algernon. So, yeah. So we so we've seen this one before. So see how it fares here. Now it was Algernon's deck that did take that, um, with Fabulousing taking it at a at a bit of six chains as the first player, and piloting that one to a victory. Yeah, and he definitely had the uh, the Chrono set up with a red penny with a draw pip, trying to get in some of that. Um archiving to potentially set up a transporter platform play potentially later on. Um, mm -hmm. But right now, he's got to deal with the board. Hopefully, that red alert will be coming soon because Ashitaka plays out four more cards. Now, what's interesting here is Ashitaka, I guess... I guess they used the trigger first and decided not to put Captain Valjerico in the middle uh, they because they got more be, creatures coming. Yeah, they must be expecting they can re recenter a Valjerico here on their turn. Yeah. But this board has already have to be somewhat worrying for Fabulousing. Let's yeah, and this look. discombobulator unfortunately won't shouldn't get any value or it'll only get value against the odd clot, it seems, and the dimension door that Ashtaka has. 
Right. Oh no, they don't have a dimension door. That's in five dollars stack. So yeah, they they're not really looking. Uh, discombobulator isn't going to be getting much value of any. And it looks like Ashitaka still has a ton of speed that we haven't seen yet. Two eclectic inquiries, two lethalogicas, the dark amber vault that you've mentioned. Um, and a, and a, is there a Cronus of their own in there as well? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yep. So I think uh, I think Ashitaka's turns are just getting started. Yeah. And a universal translator there off of uh, Valjerica. Oh, that's nice. They're starting to do their own board control. And using the odd glad to steal. Interesting. It is interesting that they're um I guess there's a red alert anyways, but it's interesting that they were uh not recentering the Valjerico there with any of that um with that fighting, purposely taking out the uh Eugenics researcher instead of fighting with something like a um Salvador or something. Right. Okay, so Fabio seen he reset the board and uh, Looks like he probably could potentially get back into it, depending on the draws. Uh, I'm definitely a little bit behind with Ashitaka now getting the check. And here comes some of that speed in Logos. Wow. That's a lot of speed. Right, we've got double eclectic increase, and we got a left logical with a drop hip. They're going to shoot up to nine with no scaling amber control really to punish that. Perhaps they've drawn the effervescent principle, but it is rather early. Fabulousine also coming, coming with a deck with, with awesome name. He who bearishly guts genomes. Love it. I love that deck name. EP is as good as a scaling amber gets in mass mutation. I love the card. That's true, quick draw. Uh, they they take what they can get, and a lot of uh, mass mutation decks are so fast that they can get back to it when they need it. Yeah, I think uh, I think mass mutation is one of the um, what one of the biggest weaknesses of mass mutations is. I mean, is the fact that there's a lack of real scaling amber control they they have access to. Hey, Amber Medes, nice to see you. Welcome and, in. And we see that uh, Fabulousing got a little bit of a Voltron going on here with Scout Pete with three upgrades. You love to see it. And a little, a tiny burst as well with those three upgrades, getting them up to five Ember. But Ashitaka comes back with five creatures. Or and a Scrivener Fabian. Four creatures, rather. No, five. Just choosing where to put the fifth. A taunted Scrivener Fabian will be trouble. Yep. However, the Blaster could get rid of it right away on the Scout Pete. I think that's your. I think your hand is sort of four. Oh, no, yo, the um, that's right. Gets a hard zealot, takes it out. Yep. And gets a reap off the smite. Now things are looking really good for Ashitaka here. Yeah, this is very dominant board control. The Scrivener Fabian has to be sort of has to be answered. There are look over there's, you know, which which can deal with it. There are three of them. Yeah, but no, the red alert's gone. No, that's a very only, low impact turn from yeah, Fabulous. Yeah, two sh shadows creatures. I should talk in the driver's seat here. Ooh, and here comes more speed with a Cronus. A capture pip and a drop pip with a Fabian out. That is a brutal card there. Wow. A steal, a draw, and an archive. Beautiful. Yep. And the Dav comes down. So that must have been that must have been the draw off of the Cronus. Yeah, yeah. The oh, and Fission Bloom. Bloom. Does he have a? Oh yeah, he's got the causal loop. That's got a drop, a drop pip. pip on it, which is doubled with the Fission Bloom. So. Two archives yeah. off of that. If only that causal loop also had a capture pip for this Fabian. <laughs> yeah. Ashitaka's rolling now. 
And that 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 dive on the Scrivener Fame Fiend is just going to make it so much harder for Fabulousing to actually answer that. Yeah. Same with Agronus. Especially with the lack of board control there. Yep. Which is something we saw in um, against Algonon's deck as well. Ooh, and this is even more important. The discombobulator. Well, it's not more important, but another factor of which will limit Fabulousing to, uh, their ability to get back in the game. The discombobulator yeah. there. Absolutely. Here comes the EP, though. Dropping them for Ember. Back off a check. And that's not bad. Cause that's only that's a one Ember loss from Fabulousing, and that's a fairly big um, hit there. So not bad. Yeah. Unfortunately, the diametric charge pretty much does nothing to a board of this size. Um, so he's still in a world of hurt against that board. Yeah. I have a feeling. Um, Yeah, I think this will be a. Uh, this will certainly go to uh, game three. Quick draw says, "Yep, this is gonna be a bloodbath. Not enough C, and he who bearishly guts genomes to deal with this deck. I think we'll see a bid higher than six in game three. Already calling the chains. Not tonight says I think I still have PTSD from Ortiz. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so that that Chronos and Causal Loop is a brutal, brutal combo. Yeah. And they burst back up already at 12. Fighting the shoulder aid with no issues because they got the discombobulator. Hmm. Yeah, I, you know, if we're taking, if we take every one card not drawn as an amber, Then this is right now what a three three plus key difference in these two decks. Oh yeah. So you know, obviously when you go down to like, you know, once you hit the second rung of chains at seven and you start drawing two less cards a turn, that you do that is a bit more uh a little bit more logarithmically impactful. Right. At this point, even though I normally play out matches Especially an adaptive match, you don't want to show anything extra about their deck. Now, there's probably nothing special that he would be showing anyway, but okay, yeah, here yeah, comes the good There's a concession. Yep. Yeah, I think that, yeah. I think that's a smart just preserving um preserving information, I think is, is worth is worth it there. Yeah. Hey Dinobot. How's it going? Alright, on the game two, quick game with a A board that they couldn't handle. Oh, looks like we lost Ashitaka on the rematch oh, yeah, we'll because of TCO. It's been happening a lot with uh, TCO. Yeah. I think the only way Genomes can win in this match straight up is to get a perfectly timed Tachyon Pulse followed by the platform and set up the Voltron early. Yeah, he's got to have an early lucky draw, I believe. So I guess we can we can update the stream overlay to say to say uh oh, yeah. one win one to uh I should talk at this point. All right, looks like the game is up. I would very much like. Oh, I don't see it. The lobby. Uh, I'll give you a link. Okay, thank you. There we go. Cool. And Fabulous scene has elected wants to, to go be first. first player. Yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah, I think there's um I know there there are some varying opinions. I know I believe Quick Draw is a very very hard and firm on always always wanting to be first player. I don't have any particularly strong thoughts on it, but the e the free mulligan off of uh, going first I think is worth a lot. Yeah, and it seems like it might even have a bigger difference once you get a large number of chains involved. 
Uh, yes, yes, it does. Absolutely. Which is why there is a slight advantage to... Um, here we go. Uh, going first, going for uh, bringing the stronger deck to guarantee you go first in game three, which I, is something that I, I you know, since this, since this is no longer a um, an official format, then uh, something that I I might change ordering on that for uh, seasons going forward. It is Captain Val Jericho turn one once again. That's right. Ortiz strikes again, uh, but. A pretty nice return with Ashitaka getting Transporter Platform, Sensor Chief Garcia with an upgrade, and three damage onto Jerrica with a Hadron Collision. Ooh, but the, the Red Logica. Alert was also used right away. Interesting. That was a bit of a mistake in ordering because if they had, they had, I guess Hadron Collision doesn't remove armor, does it? So it doesn't matter. Right. Right. For some reason, I, I had I had in my head that it removed the armor and then did the damage, but no. Just ignores it. It's the captain. Yeah, it doesn't actually make a difference, quick draw, but I did. Uh, <laughs> I did think that. This is the fine. It's the final. So I'm. I would expect. I would expect some. You know, some some moments of being in the tank for both of these players in these games. Absolutely. There's a KFPL qualification on the line here. Nice. So I'm not sure if Ashitaka has already um, already qualified or not. Yeah, you would imagine that they would have with how well they've done with other leagues, but not not positive. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure because they, you know, you can get a lot of core points from finishing high up in standings and not necessarily winning. Yeah. So if they haven't qualified already, then it would be going to Fabulousing. And Fabulousing did get through a lot of speed right there. A logic, a two eclectic inquiries, and of course a couple other cards out. Getting yeah. the Valjerico trigger. They're seeing a lot more of their deck right now. That is great, though. They're getting some value off the look over there, which is something that almost never happened last week um, with uh, Five Lossings, Hugh Cuts Genomes against Algonon. This wasn't ever able to get proper value off those look over there. Yeah, I got value on two steals on that turn. That's pretty important. However, Val Jericho still surviving. Yeah, I think that Valjerico has to go as soon as possible. Yeah, it's if if it's not gone next turn, it might be over. Uh yeah, I I, I genuinely think so. I think it, this this you can't you can't really afford um Ortiz here to uh, they took their archives too, so you know this is gonna be a big turn. Yeah, and there is a lot of ways to do a lot of damage in Sanctum with the double smites, with the Gizzleheart Zealot. Yeah, and I would I wouldn't be yeah. There's a zealot to fight the. That's interesting, to fight the shoulder id there. I imagine we'll see a smite come down to take out the shoulder id and the Garcia. What I was hoping for would be um, is a discombobulator play off of Valjerico, to then fight into, but. Mm. There's a smite keeping board dominance mm -hmm. and very limited board control opportunities left in the genome gutter. Yeah, we got a steal there. Oh, we got the causal loop off of the um, Fountain Jericho trigger. Oh, nice. Burning glare to start to stun the red penny. So two steals in. Mm hmm. Very nice. That's a good equalization turn for Fabulousing. Plus, you know, having a big board that's with the red alert already gone. Right? Dawn turn one. Yep. But Ashitaka is able to get rid of Valjerica with a couple damage pips, get a little bit more speed with the daughter. 
So not not a bad turn. Yeah, I agree, Quick Draw. I think um I think the red alert in Fabulous Things deck in the gene in, in the genome cutter is way too valuable. It's their only real C in the whole deck. Um outside of the three look over there's and it's their only thing that can handle a wide board. Especially if a dav come down dav comes down and makes everything um you know, plus two power, I think you have to hold the red alert. And I like your point, not tonight. Causal loop is even better on the off turn. It, it totally is. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because normally you're archiving a Logos card and another card on a Logos turn. Now you can archive two Logos cards on a Logos turn or a non Logos turn and make your Logos turn a lot more effective. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. I think the red I think the red alert is exactly the card you chain yourself with on uh Ashtaka side there. Fabulous getting a check. And hopefully they're able to kill the Fabian this turn. Getting a little bit of bouncer or uh bouncing in with a transporter platform to use the pips on the z-force agent to get yeah i think that was a little bit of an ordering mistake as they captured onto the red penny and then shot it yeah well, i imagine what they probably meant to do is they thought they were resolving the damage pip first there yeah and that would have been an opportunity to get rid of the fabian with the two damage pips well they already used one this turn on the fabian okay yeah so they yeah, the right. um they elected to reshuffle the red penny instead of doing just one extra damage, which I think is fair. Um, you know, this, now it's now it's inside. Look over their range. Yeah, they may have been going a little bit too quick and wanted to just capture on it instead of just damaging it. Also Hard true. To say. Yeah. And some mistakes on Fabulous's side. Did they mean to fight? Uh... They put it down Ardent Hero to ki which killed Fabian because it had the shoulder. Oh, it wasn't on the flank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Yeah, and Ashitaka did confirm that the uh, capture damage was a misclick as well. Yeah, as expected. So what what's kind of interesting in this game so far is Fabulousing's deck really isn't going off. It did have the early Valjerico plays, but it isn't really going off like it can. But it's still mm -hmm. kind of in control um, without much concern. Yeah, I'm not I'm not super worried in Fabulousing's seat. I think you have lots of tools to con to get, continue to get yourself ahead. And there goes the first key. And into Logos. I do like the um Liam say in uh Ashitaka's deck. Yeah, that that's actually pretty important. Nice placement with the Cronus to get it under taunt with the Ardent Hero. Boosting up that archive, up to four. And we got the mutagenic serum, which opens up some very. There's lots of mutants on this board. Yeah, and we haven't even seen the dab yet, so board will get even more scary. Yeah, so back to what Quick Draw said. I think this is easily going past six chains. This this could be double digits easily, I think. Yeah, because the problem is I don't. You have to equalize like a two key difference here. Well, kind of. You kind of have to equalize like a three key difference in the decks. Yeah, and I don't even think we've seen this deck go off to its potential. If it gets 
Dav early, a bunch of mutants early. Mutants oh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Off of Val Jericho. Um, they can just go nuts. Exactly. So I think. Um... I don't know. Will you take this 14 chains, maybe? It, yeah, I think it's it's upwards of that. Uh, I could see a 12 to 14 chain. It's not easy math. No, that's, that's, it, I, once you get past six chains and into the seven plus range, yeah, the math starts getting a lot harder because it's... Um, it's not a it's not a linear line. It's more like a it's like a logarithmic or exponential curve. So, yeah, exactly. Not tonight because it's really easy on. Um, because this is a it is a very fast deck, but the Ashitaka's deck does want to board, and yeah, board control is is what I see as really being important. Once you get up into the higher chains, you gotta if you are positive that you can still control the board. Um, yeah, yeah, and then. The other thing is, how comfortable are these players playing at a high chain? Because some players who haven't played at that high a chain level are scared to go that high, even when it's the right call. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Quickdraw says, 14 is too much. I, I think 14 is, is quite a lot. Uh, three card hands is really, really debilitating. I think it's also a question of if you're in an interesting position when the opponent has a stronger deck, because they are they have both the pressure of they want the deck because of their familiarity, and they want the deck because it's the one that has the better chance of winning, it has the better matchup. Yeah. So they have double tw twice as much pressure to take their deck at an at a higher than which I than a higher than ideal chain number. Oh, here comes Atakian. Pulse getting a couple creatures exhausted. Atakian Pulse is actually really good for Ashitaka here. But the Dav still has to come down, I believe. So No, yeah. And that means no more upgrade bouncing in the future. However, I think they're already kind of through most of their upgrades. Oh, I guess we've only seen one in the discard pile, so I'm wrong about that. Ortiz is just 5.5 Ember Control. It won't last 14 chains, I think. Okay, we got Transporter Platform down for Fabulousing. They archive a card off Cronus. They play Survey, and they are stunning the... Oh, it's Survey. Oh, they discarded the Subdue? Okay. And Hayden Oswin comes down. And we do And it's get... covered under Lady Lorena's tent, uh, Taunt, which is really nice. Right. And already with one upgrade, so there could be some potential value there in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think to your point, Quick Draw, Ortiz is a... Uh, that 5.5 .5 might be a little bit underrated. Obviously, it depends on what comes and when. You know, the, I think the Fabian probably in most games is a lot higher than it's rated. Uh, but with the chains, it might not be be that high. Yeah, and to not tonight's point, I think um, like if they don't see if they're operating on three card hands, like if they it, it, on a three card hand, you are so likely to have a one 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 for a long time, or like a one two, and so it becomes it does become very hard to cycle um, efficiently. Yeah. 
I just have make any meeting any meaningful progress on developing your board state. Ashitaka had a great hand to take Fabulousian off check, but with the discombobulator can do nothing. I mean, look at the look at this game, right? Like, Ashitaka's deck has has been doing fairly okay. Fabulousian the the uh, Ortiz has not been super firing. Um, yeah, we still haven't even got to the dav, and it's still easily oh. up two keys, and they could exactly. just reap out with no pressure. And there's no pressure from actually yeah. no meaningful pressure from Ashitaka here. Okay, and there's the concede. Good game. And now on to the exciting part: how many chains will they go? This will be very interesting to see. Okay. And so now we're on to an adaptive best of one lobby. Okay, it's there in the casual. Mm -hmm, I see it there. I I think I would go double judges for this one. 10, 11, I think 10 or 11 to me is where what I'd get up to. I think if you're Ashitaka, you can take it at uh, 12. Yeah. Uh, because you are first player, um, you will, you can shed that extra chain. Not tonight would go 10. Well, it's also kind of hard, right? Because a, a fabulous thing is going to want to bid at break points. Right, so they bid five right away. Ashitaka comes back with seven, seven right away. Quick draw says he'd also go with ten. Fabulous he goes fair. up to nine. Nine. Ashitaka will definitely take it at ten. Yeah. What well, will they jump up even more right here? And Ashitaka is operating at one less chain essentially. There's this bid for ten. Yeah, they're they're uh, they take they bid they bid, they, bid Ooh, they took twelve. Twelve. I think Ashitaka part lets them have it here. At that 12. break point, so yeah. if Ashitaka takes it, the first will be at, with only three cards. And Ashitaka, Ashitaka goes 13. thirteen. All right, here we go. I think I think you let Ashitaka, I think you let Ashitaka take this at thirteen. I th I'm I think we're in for an exciting third game. I think I think so too. Fabry Lalsing is still thinking about it. Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh wow. Wow. I think, wow, I think you definitely let Fabry Lalsing have it here. I <laughs> hear then. Man, this is a this is crazy team bidding. I should talk. I was thinking about it though. You know, yeah, they, talk, this they know a, this deck. Yeah, this is not a snap pass from Ashitaka. Yeah. Oh, you know, something to do for the future. Is track chain bids in in matches like this? I wonder if this is like the highest chains for at least the Kagi finals. I think it's the highest. The highest chains I have had in an adaptive game was when, what was my Moirai playoffs match for Central Team events against not now Stereo, where he, uh, they took their deck at fourteen chains. Nice. Ashadog is really thinking about this. I had an early Kage match where I won with 13 or 14, but that was against a very bad deck. Yeah, I remember one of the KFPL short adaptive events where I played a lot of matches above 10 chains. Yeah, when you start getting to three card hands, you are really, really, really taking a hit. Yeah. Like you have to like that is a, you really think that your deck is is very favored in that matchup. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, 
Ooh, I should talk apostles and let Fabulousing have Ortiz for 15 chains. Wow. All right. Okay, this should be very interesting. Very interesting. All right, so Ashitaka will try and get the early board. And Fabulousing really has to make sure that they have enough tools. I mean, obviously trying to have a Dark Amber Volt or some of the Logos efficiency early will help. Mm -hmm. But they'll want to, especially if they get some of the Archiving and Logos, they're probably going to be wanting to get the Smites and kind of some of the board control um, archive so that they can control that board. Cause a loop to start. That's actually pretty good. Um, no Captain Valjerico start. No turn one Captain Valjerico this turn. But Eclectic Inquiry and Cause a loop to start. Um, that's pretty pretty good. That's very good. And for those who are watching the live stream, I have started a prediction in the chat for Zox channel. You can predict channel points. On who will win, will it be Ashitaka or Fabulousing? Get him in. It's a two-minute prediction. So get him in. Let me know who you think is going to win that and bet your channel points on it. Awesome. Okay. Ashitaka comes back, discards the Effervescent Principle, plays Daughter, plays Cronus. Um takes out the Center Chief Garcia. Or damages it with a damage pip, sorry. More speed from Fabulousing. Crazy. Fission Bloom on the Eclectic Inquiry to get more Ember. Four Cause cards loot, archived and a hand of... Serum. And four Amber with a three card hand. Ashitaka is getting some value here out of the steel. Red Penny comes down. Getting to also archive with the Kronos. Damaging. Killing the Red Penny with the look over there to put it back in the deck. And tempting offer. And Dinobot is all in on Ashitaka. See if there's any value bets on uh, Fabulousing here. Well, I can't bet, but I'd bet on him. I will I will I will bet on uh, Fabulousing. Fabulousing has my has my has my money. Although Ashitaka is a very good player, so there's still a lot of game left to play here. But another four turn or four card turn. Or sorry. This has been exactly the start that uh Yeah. Fabulousing needs. Survey, Transpire Platform, Explorer, and Mutagenesis Researcher. And then Ashitaka comes back with Seeker Needle. Red Penny again, getting lots of value out of the Red Penny and the Kronos. Yep. An eight card hand right now, taking the archive after having a with 11 chains at the same time. <laughs> oh, the dab out early. Nice. The dab oh, that out. That is so big. Odd Claude with the two damage pips to take out the daughter. That's pretty good. Lethalogica into the Cronus. Here comes the Cronus action. Yeah, with the two with the two draws off the dab and the pip this and the capture. This is a great start. Oh, man. And the causal loop again with the Kronos. For archives it back up to four so quickly already after just yeah, taking should have. Yeah, should have Fission Bloom the Kronos. Yeah, they forgot the Fission Bloom there. Oh, they could have uh, Fission Bloomed the uh, Odd Clot as well, actually, for the extra damage to take care of the Kronos. Yeah, the daughter was not a bad choice, I think, for... No, it wasn't a bad choice at all. I think the Cronus is probably better. But, but they did... They did have options. They could have got an extra draw in Archive, for sure. Yeah. Not using the Fission Bloom at all that turn was, I think, uh, just 
they don't know the deck that well. Yeah, or to your point, they could have killed the Central Chief Garcia and the and the daughter with the Fission Bloom. Mm hmm. Yes. Yep. I should talk about opposition the opposition research. research. That's pretty good. Although, that is good. I'm not sure if Fabulousin cares that much about that. So, yeah, Fabulousin is up, and they still yeah. got 10 chains. This is amazing. Oh, and if you mind, if you don't mind updating the the um, layout to show that Fabulousin is won a, a game as well. This is the third yes, game yes. of you. that. So, this is game three. Fabulousing took Ashitaka's deck at 15 chains. And nice to see you, Abad. Yeah, welcome in. We got the AFK represented in here. Yeah. Yeah, this is looking really bad for Ashitaka. Yeah. Oh, and they can fight with the Quixo here into the Munchling. And an early Discombobulator is down. The Quixo will probably take out the shoulder. They're trying to get to that Kronos. Yeah, that makes sense. And the discombobulator means no steel off the shoulder in anyways. Yeah. This is key for you never been, know yeah. how it's gonna Oh my god, and double subdues in hand two. Wow. This has been absolutely just absurd hands from Fabulousing. Yeah, like we were saying we didn't think we'd seen this deck go off, and it just happened to go off with 15 chains. 15 chains. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think this is the deck going off, yeah. Oh, and Red Alert is... Only two damage. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I don't think you can let the let it let it keep going off. I, don't, I think you have to there. You know, could they have Particle swept their own creature to make it hit for more? Damage, Probably. two damage to their own creature. Uh, yeah, I think you but you could have sub, you could have uh, maybe it only kills a quicksaw. Is it worth it? Probably at this point. Probably, yeah. Because yeah. you could have you could have uh, hit your own QMX. I got hit QMX. Yeah. Yeah, and then you could use that hadron collision on the uh, universe on the. Uh... But they want the steel. That makes sense. But you could the. Uh... Genesis Researcher having an Amber and the Universal Translator on it is uh, bad news, too. And the Dab doing his thing of just making all of all of the mutants just uh, really, uh, really hard to reach with that Ashitaka's damage base removal. Right, and Ashitaka, they already burned their EP. Um, of course they have the Shadow Steel, but with uh, Fabulousian already up over a key... Um, yeah. I don't think they can get back into this. And this is turn six. <laughs> right. <laughs> turn six of 15 chains, and Fabulousing already has two keys. That is amazing. Now, obviously... Their deck is going off here, but this is this is a matchup, especially with this result. I would love to see you know played out ten times because if Ortiz had the draw like it did in the second game, what would have been the outcome there? Um, yeah, and that's exactly. what makes Q4 so fun though. It's every game is different. Yep. We, we we hate this and love this game for the variants. Yes. Okay, look over there. Got some value. Three Double steals. steals. Very nice. You know, this is the and I will say this is the farthest we've seen uh, 
the genome, uh, he who bearishly cuts genomes, as far as it's go, right? It's it's got one key and four amber. This is the this is the most progress we've seen it make yet. Yeah. And still eight chains to burn. Still eight chains and still eight cards in their hand after pulling the archive. <laughs> Fabian. Fabian. Drawn cards with the Dorica Amber Volt. They're just, they have the unstoppable chain going now. Yeah, and a steal and a draw. And their whole board is under taunt. Yeah. Let's see. We haven't seen the tachyon pulse yet. That would help. I think obviously it's too late at this point, but and here comes the smites to get him the check. Yeah, I don't know if they have uh, if Ashitaka has they have a Xeno training, right? They would have had to redraw no, that's it. Oh, yep. This is it. There's a the impulse. They have a capture pip, I think, on one of the upgrades. And wow. Crazy. What a crazy game three. Ortiz going off. Well done yep. for Fabulousing sticking and going with the 15 chains and it paying off for him. I mean, that was a... Like, nobody... Nobody else was saying they would take it for that. Wow. I I did say twelve to fourteen was what I was my estimate, but okay. that also was an absolute pop off for. Uh, yeah, they played nine sanctum that turn with eight chains. This quick draw, amazing. Great well played game. to both. Well played, and congratulations to Fabulousine. And wow. I know we are hoping to get uh, player interviews here. Yep, I will reach out and see. Let's see, I think. <laughs> Quick draw is betting all the channel points they just lost uh, with the. Uh, <laughs> would never happen with 15 chains. <laughs> but it's fair. Zoc will have to. Since I bet it, Zoc will have to pay out the prediction. But I think uh, I think I I am going to be uh, going to be rich in channel points after this one because I had faith. I had faith in uh, Fabulousing. Yeah, the three card hand turn one. Definitely not tonight. The eclectic inquiry. Um, causal loop. The other eclectic turn two. Yeah. What a start. Let's see. Maybe we can... Um... So, yes. Fabulousing will be available for interview in a few minutes. Maybe we can just jump into a Sanctimonious channel. Uh, yes. Yeah, we can do that. So, I'll, I'll meet you in one of those. Yeah. Let's go Triad League 1 right now. I'll see you there. And we're in. All right. Hey, Ashitaka. Welcome into welcome into the uh, the Twitch chat as a uh, as the unfortunate second place finisher in Kagi 6.0, but well played for all of the games. I thought they're all very well played. I think that that red alert uh, turned one was really unfortunate. Yeah, he's not in this. All right, he's ready. He'll join us here. And uh, yeah, first we'll interview Fabulousing and then Ashitaka, if you also 
want to interview. I'd love to get your insights into your awesome deck. Hi, me. Hey, Hello, fabulous. Thing. Hey, how's it going? Good. It's going great. I mean, we just we just watched two, uh, three very great games of adaptive, so I think it's doing pretty well over here. Awesome. Well, I just played three great games of adaptive. Yes, congratulations, congratulations on winning Kagi 6.0. Thank you. Yes, I'm really excited about it. You are the lucky recipient of a KFPL qualification. Awesome. I have to learn, find my survival decks now. Yes, you will. I think the, uh, the uh, I can't remember the name of the format right now, but the three, the, the multi, the multi uh, race format for KFPL 5 looks really, really fun. It, you have to pick decks from five different sets or something, right? Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Hope my hope my woe decks come in the mail in time because I do not own anything from Dark Tidings at the moment. <laughs> well, you can always borrow, and I know there's lots that of people true. in the community that are that are always open to to helping it, all players for the KFPL. That's yeah. a good point. I always I'm always hesitant to borrow, but for an event like this, I might have to make an exception. That's exactly. exciting, and uh, congratulations so much, um, and well done. You know, having the Hutzpa to bid 15 chains for that deck. What Did you have a yeah. limit for how high you were going to go? Um, My limit was either 15 or 17. I was really stuck on it. I know it's a crazy number. Um, The thing about the deck I brought is that it has a couple very exploitable weaknesses. Um, And the biggest problem it has is specifically fast decks that rely on reaping to gain their ember. Um, cause my deck's a little slow. It's a little inconsistent. It doesn't have a ton of actual draw and it only has a couple really big power cards. Like the only two cards that really swing the game when you play them immediately are Everpresent Principle and Red Alert. You can very easily draw them at the wrong time or draw them in a bad matchup where they'll just be the bottom six cards of your deck. Um, the deck that my opponent brought was both extremely explosive with those insane amber, uh, those insane, uh, pips for the draw and the insane logo suite but also had that really powerful Sanctum board that, you know, if I don't draw the red, red alert at the right time, I just will not win if he gets a board of, like, six-plus guys. Um, and because of that Logo Suite, I know I got a little lucky in the game, as you guys saw, I'm sure, to draw, like, the triple Logo Sand turn one. But the idea was I was pretty sure I could win a game playing multiple turns on three cards, just trying to build up the archives and survive from there. Because once I got a board, I knew the game would be over. Oh, you're a mute. Murph. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. Because I know, um, I know it's a general consensus that chains hurt board decks a lot, which we did see Ortiz was. Yeah, I mean, so I it was that... it was it was the liberal draw that really changed the equation for me. Um, I I knew that uh, in addition that my deck would give enough time. Like, unless you get a really lucky Z agent draw, my deck doesn't actually generate amber that quickly. A lot of its amber generation is actually the incremental steal from the shadow suite so you honestly have a lot of time if you're not building up amber yourself to kind of stall against my deck and do whatever you need to do to enact your game plan right yeah of course and we saw we did see now we did see that um he who bearishly cuts genomes had the most game progression in that game three with the 15 chains on ortiz at being one key almost at two keys um so i i'm curious if if ashitaka had bid 16 but well, what was your limit going into yeah. that for when you um, were comfortable taking it and when you were comfortable passing it if he had bid 16 i probably would have gone 17 and then let whatever happened happen there um i would not wow. have been happy with 17 i really wouldn't and initially when i was going through my when i sat down to do the bidding i was like okay my limit's 15 once it actually got to that um and luckily i didn't have to go past that i if he had bid 16 there, I honestly, I think the matchup would have been favored for that. I think 16 chains, or I forget his deck's name, I think his deck was favored at that instance. 17, I think, is a much closer cutoff, and you would have, again, required really good draws. But I think I would have rather tried to spike a couple lucky archives from his deck than try to grind against it, even with, like, 17 chains. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, so I know um, I know everyone in the chat, uh, mo uh, most people in the chat were looking at 10 chains is sort of the max on uh, Ashitaka's deck, so that's a very different evaluation. Yeah. Even I was, though I was the most liberal, and I said 12 to 14. So that is a, that is, <laughs> I mean, we're all, apparently we all underestimated uh, Ashitaka's deck in that matchup. 
Yeah, it's very likely I'm overestimating by a couple. I definitely think the 15 was correct. Um, I'm not sure if I'm right that I should have gone past that if it came to that. But uh, I think the 15, it certainly wasn't like a great matchup, but I, I think it would probably still be like 55 to 60% to win at that instance. Yeah, and yeah. well, we, we saw... Um, sorry, go ahead. Well, especially w with your draw at the start of this game, this deck just went crazy. And, and w it was a better draw with the uh, 15 chains in the third game than I even know. the first two games and it already had two keys by turn six so yeah it, we we were talking a little bit about that when we were talking about the chain bidding it's like we really haven't seen this deck fully go off and it just so happened it, it went crazy you know even w with 15 chains uh, so well well stick well played sticking to your guns and, and going for it yeah, and my opponent, I think it was game two or game three. I think it was game two where he discarded Effervescent Principle on the first turn. Um, and I'm, I'm probably assuming that was because of the chain count, but that was part of what made me be willing to just push for such an explosive draw, like taking the Logos archives back multiple times just to gain the Ember and the eventual cards instead of like playing the couple Sanctum creatures I had. Yeah, and I think um, we also saw that the Red Alert came out really early, like on turn one or i think it was turn one. yeah exactly he, that was the art yeah he used it to deal with the early uh jericho uh just to get extra damage on it and similarly like the the reason i think this deck mine did so well this league is it's a powerful deck it's obviously very well rounded but again it really requires those specific cards and you absolutely can never discard red alert or ever present principle like you have to hold, hold those cards against decks that are actually like 70 plus sass against decks that are competitive level if you aren't resolving both of those effects probably at least twice in a game, you're not actually going to outrace them. Uh, so it really is worth chaining yourself multiple times to actually get the board swing with a red alert or to get a big amber turn with Effervescent Principle. Maybe less so with Effervescent, but the, the red alert's especially important. Yeah, and it, right, yeah. Those key cards that you're talking about, and then also the weaknesses which you were talking about before, you know... Uh, that obviously showed here with with how well you know your deck and how well you know you know what's important to play against it, and, and uh, you took it all the way to the to the championship. So, uh, well done. Yeah, very thank well played. You. Thank you for having me on today. Yeah, yeah so, of course. Thank you for coming on for a player interview. I think the I think it's it's really 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 wonderful to get the players' perspectives on uh, how the games went. Yeah, absolutely. We, we jumped right into the game because it was so exciting, uh, but. Could you just tell tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in, in Keyforge, especially, uh, yeah, for those who might not know you? Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Fabulous, and if that hasn't been said yet, uh, real name Dylan. I'm from New York. Uh, I've been playing Keyforge since day one. Um, I've been an avid Magic player. I used to play Netrunner. So the moment I saw new Richard Garfield card game get announced, I was in. Uh, I missed the initial Kickstarter, but I was down at my store first day buying a box of Call the Archons. Uh, my competitive history in Keyforge didn't really start until like, right before the pandemic when I discovered the Crucible, uh, and by extension, you know, the various discords and Discord communities. Um, most of my Keyforge play has either been with school friends or with family, uh, but I started playing uh, pretty heavily around early, mid-2020, just kind of grinding Crucible ladder and going into occasional events. Um, I did take a bit of a lull in the game around when Dark Tidings came out, uh, and it was the announcement of Winds of Exchange that got me back in, and it was that time where I found Kagi and started doing those events. I got top four in the last Kagi event, and I'm very excited to have only taken two to get a win. Yeah, awesome. I think, yeah, I, I personally, you know, you've you uh, you've really come in as a uh, as a storm into Kagi with top four last season, and then you know, champion this season. Yeah, I mean, I'm relatively new to the Keyforge competitive play, but I've been playing competitive card games of some capacity for about two-thirds of my life, starting with, like, the Pokemon card game when I was eight, going to, like, city championships and such. Yeah, of course. And I think um, I think one of the nice things about Adaptive is that, you know, I think, I think Adaptive is one of the most Keyforge formats that exists. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I've had a couple of bad experiences, not awful, but going into some of the more competitive-minded uh, Archon events and just getting my butt handed to me three rounds in a row by decks I could never open myself. And again, I've, I know I've, people tend to lend decks for those type of events, but I 
like to try to use the ones I own, and I find obviously adaptive is just much better for that. Yeah, and uh, you know, Kagi stands for Keyforge's Garfield Tended, and the whole spirit of that quote is that, um, as I mentioned at the top of the show, but you know, it's instead of bringing the deck that has the best chance to win, you're bringing the deck, and you're just you're trying to you bring any deck that you want to bring, trying to win with it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, it's definitely the best format. I think that's why leagues agree. like Kagi are so important as well, because everybody wants to play this game their own way, and and just like Garfield said, and and just like a bunch of people, they they don't want to go out and try and find a super competitive deck. They want to use the decks that they have, and Adaptive lets you do that. And so it's important to have leagues like this to to give that opportunity to players. And so I think the more that we can make sure that kind of everybody out there even you know people that might not be in part of the discord community and things like that know about leagues like this you know i think it'll give opportunities for keyforge to grow because um i i think it's important to show those formats where you can use any deck um and yeah maybe it's it's not great for casual nights every week because you're playing you know potentially three games every match but it's still an important part for how we can use our Keyforge decks and, and what makes Keyforge awesome. Absolutely. For sure. I, I know the best of three. I, I agree. It can be pretty grinding sometimes. I had some matches that were getting close to about two hours by the time we were done with them. Um, but again, that's what makes this league so great is that it's a once a week schedule as you go. So it's much easier to work around that than like, okay, we're going to sit down for six rounds of this consecutively. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think um, the play the play when you can um, pod structure of Kagi is is also at the heart of trying to make the league as inclusive as possible to as many people. Because you know what, there's a lot of there's a lot of really really great leagues. There's a lot of really really great formats that are out there, and I think it's a shame that as just the nature of things go that they they will all siphon off of each other a little bit. And at least with the play as you go structure. There's a little bit of freedom to work that into your schedule, however it can. Absolutely, and thank you so much, Murph, for taking on the role of hosting these again. I know you, if I'm correct, you were not the original host, or you were not for a while. No, Fighting Walloon started it. Uh, they yeah. they left in season five, and this is my first season running it. Well, fantastic job to you. Seriously, thank you so much for everything both of you do for the community. Oh, thank you very much. I think uh, both. I, I know I certainly appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it, it's important to keep these leagues running. So well done, Murph. It, it, it's great. Um, yeah, I know. And, and, and Kagi is a beloved leaf. So I know if I hadn't stepped in, I'm, I mean, I'm certain um, someone else would have, which is the really nice thing about this community. I was in a position where I was, you know, able to. So I'm happy. To, I was happy to take on the mantle to make make sure that one of my favorite leagues thrived. Awesome. So anything else you want to mention while you have the spotlight, Fabulousy? Um. Thanks to all my great opponents. I had some really fantastic matches. Shout out to Dispod. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all for future events. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. I think we're going to try Thank and you. get Ashitaka in here. Yeah. We'll Thanks, a, Fabio uh... and congratulations. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Yeah, you too. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Ashitaka. Uh, we're in the Triad League 1. Hey, How are you in here? Uh, yeah. Hey. Bonjour. <laughs> so oh, sorry for my <laughs> I am fine, thank you, and you. Very well, thank you. Thanks for joining. You're welcome. Thank uh, thanks to you for the streaming and also for running uh, this great event because uh, like my opponent, I love uh, adaptive uh, game on adaptive format. For me it's the best also. Yeah, well you you certainly have the record to prove it. If you are one of the uh uh, titans of of Kagi and certainly of adaptive. Actually, you're, you're just one of the one of the uh, the giants of the competitive Keyforge scene. So I think it's always an honor to to watch you play your games. Thank you, thank you very much. Yes, and I think it was the first time I play uh, versus uh, fabulous thing. But uh, sorry, uh, fabulous. Sorry for my... Yes, and uh, I did not know this player. I assume before, but it's a it's a great player and uh, his deck. Uh, I maybe surestimate this deck. I think it would it could make my number if my deck has uh, 15 chains. But uh, yes. yeah, I think uh, we were talking about it before. But it seemed like in game one and game two, Ortiz was doing sort of a mid roll, and we weren't seeing the full capability of it yet. 
Um, yes. But in game three, it seemed like it absolutely popped off. Yes, because he starts with three cards, I assume, for almost three turns, but he got all of, um, at the beginning the casual loop with the draw and also uh, so uh, archive card with, uh, with this card and after the, the artifact to double to, to double the draw. But yes, um, my deck could be really slow if he doesn't get the, the speed from the beginning. Sometimes yeah. it happens even without a chance. Yeah, I am sure. The the of Logicos, Collective Inquiries, Dab are all, you know, bottom half. I'm sure it, it feels like a different deck. Yeah, um, yeah, and it would be interesting to see that match played at 15 chains a whole bunch of times in a row to see, because obviously it popped off there and it had almost the perfect draw um, to to kind of do what it needed to do. Uh, but with with kind of how it drew in the first two games, it, it obviously would have been a much closer game with that 15 chain. So it, it'd be interesting to see kind of how how it would play out multiple times. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your deck and why why did you pick it to to play in the adaptive league? Okay, uh, usually I don't play uh, strongest deck in the adaptive. I prefer more. Uh technical and middle range deck like uh, to, to I don't like to, to talk about SAS but about uh, 70 or less in SAS. Uh, actually uh, I got less time to play Keyforge uh, uh, from few few months so uh, I play a deck that I open uh, I don't remember exactly when but I think uh, last year uh, in August or something like that and since I open it I, I love this deck because it's really incredible. He has a lot of speed, uh, a lot of archive, and make Umber really, really quickly, can control Umber, even um, if the SAS uh, it's text of key for shade. It's only 5.5, uh, so it's not a big, but with um, with um, the Favian and all the capture, it could be, uh, all capture is, is still. So it's a big, um, big improvement for the, the control Umber. And he, yes, he has an incredible speed on the big board in Sanctum. All works in this deck for me because uh, I have a dev, I know I have only five maintenance, but two are really, really important the Cronus and the Fabian. Cronus for speed, of course, with the six uh, draw, uh, draw hands, and the Fabian with the five, uh, five capture. So it's a big part of the deck. And also, you have the red alert if I don't have the, um, the board. And the Sanctum, uh, I got three uh, free tone creatures, so it's very, very important for uh, for me to, to have the board and to, to taunt my, my important creature like Cronus or uh, Fabian. Uh, yeah, and I know we were, uh, we had mentioned that uh, we were lamenting that there wasn't also a capture pip on that causal loop. Uh, yes. But I think, I think that would have made uh, made it all the, all the better. Uh, but I also think it's also really the DAV, you know, b beyond all that pieces of DAV, this is just such another layer where it, making those mutants, those, hi those high priority mutants with uh, especially Fabian and Cronus, five power just takes them out of out of the range of so much spot of damage based removal. Yes, and also we have the Shoulder Armor that we can uh, grow uh, the Fabian as a, uh, or um, the Cronus, but he has to keep it in the um, in the flank, on the flank of the battle line. Yep. Yes, like, you did uh, see that unfortunate mistake that Fabulousing yeah, did make. Yes, it could be. It could be a, a mistake. And also, uh, to optimize the deck, the draw is very important because we have a draw on one metallurgic. Okay? So uh, when the, um, the draw is empty, we can make it again. And like this, uh, circle the deck uh, right. sometimes many times in the, in the same turn. I got some incredibly incredible games versus not tonight also and the uh, quick draw in the quarter final and the se semi final. It was really really uh, exciting, and uh, yes, I can I could make uh, sometimes uh, still five numbers in the same turn, make ten numbers just by seeking right. the deck. Use the right uh, draw at the at the good time. The fish and right. bloom is important also for that, and I know my uh, opponent can uh, miss playing the deck by um, not optimize their turns. So it's why I choose this deck. 
Right. Very interesting. Because I know, uh, I know, not tonight in the chat uh, at the beginning was saying that they had a, uh, they were traumatized uh, by facing Ortiz in the past. Um, specifically, I think by the by the causal loop on Grit and Cronus, uh, especially on off trends with Valjerico. Uh, she does have a question that... in the chat here. This is asking, uh, does such a high roll as we saw in Game Three happen often with Ortiz? Mm, I think uh, Ortiz can op uh, often do uh, crazy things. The opposite is um, less true. So I uh, I bet on the opposite for the last game, but it doesn't work. Uh, I played a lot last time, so I can maybe give my my uh, uh, sorry my win my win rate ratio on artists are not on, only an adaptive. So almost on uh, eighty games, I have uh, seventy five percent, and sometimes with uh, versus very very uh, big deck, and uh, so. For me, the high roll is not the high roll. It's uh, more—I don't know if we can say that—a down roll, <laughs> uh, right. the opposite of the roll, because often it could make um, uh, a lot of speed just to have a setup. Maybe sometimes wait the, the good turn, put your turn creature, and uh, let's go in logos. And after it's finished, if I can set up in logos, yes, uh, the game could be over. And yeah, like say fabulous thing, yes, the important thing is to keep. Uh, uh, clear board and something like that, but I, I, at the end of the game, I um, as uh, three games, the red alert was on my archive from the beginning, but he never put a big board. And at the end, I was okay, I need to go, but I know he has Sanctum in archive, Sanctum in hand, so it will be finished. And when he forged his uh, first key before me, yes, I know it will be, um, it will be finished before me. Yeah, right. So it seems like it has enough speed almost that it can make it own it makes its own high roll, you know, based mm -hmm. off of the cars in it. Uh, another question, would you bid more if I uh, if I play again? Uh it's really hard question because yes, at, at this level for me, it's when the player as um, good as we are, I assume, uh it's on lucky lucky part on the draw. I think if I, I draw, for example, the platform on Z agent with uh, two or three uh, upgrade, it will be a different game for sure. So uh, I think, like, say, Fabulous Thing, 5, 15, maybe 16, but not more. So, right, so uh, I know um, Fabulous Thing was, was saying that they, they wouldn't be happy about it, but they were willing to go to 17 chains. Yes, I, I don't know if... I, <laughs> I think 16 would be my, my last uh, my last word for me, but uh, maybe after two or three three defeat, I could uh, <laughs> go uh, up uh, until uh, eight. Um, yes, 18 uh, chance maybe. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, cause, well, because I mean, you the Ortiz had made had made two keys by turn six. Yes, which is yes. that's sort of uh, to to make two keys by turn six is usually is quite is quite a feat generally. Uh, especially uh, against competent decks, and that's only on three card hands, which is rather incredible. It is. So I think uh, I think we were all all humbled in our uh, in our evaluation of Ortiz there, because I think uh, even I I was the most I was the most liberal, and I said twelve or fourteen, and I don't think I really would have been comfortable going above fourteen. Yes, it's really hard. I think I never play more than yes uh, fourteen, fifteen chance after. I guess it's. It's more uh, gambling, maybe for me, uh, for the draw. Yeah, but maybe I, think, I, maybe, uh, maybe I'm I am wrong, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe <laughs> because I think uh, obviously it paid off for fabulous this time. Great. Well, another amazing finish uh, for you in the league. You've you've placed very high many seasons. Um, you have a, a lot of great skill in adaptive. I hope to see you in a future league again. I'm sure we'll be having you. Um, yes. In a final in the future again. Oh, um, we will see for final. But <laughs> yes, I, I will join the Kagi League. It's always a pleasure, and all the participants are great, and it's very pleasant to play with them. Wonderful. Because I think um, I know for our part, and for my part as the as a league organizer, we will be having um, signups for Kagi 7.0 go some go up sometime later later in the week. So take awesome. a look out for that. I'm still working on some of the scheduling, um, but the sign-up form should be going out later in the week this week. So okay. 
Get into the Sanctimonious Discord. Hashtag Hoggy is a channel for that link for yep. the sign up uh, later Wonderful. this week. And um, Ashley Talk, is there anything else that you wanted to say? Any shout outs? I know the AFK community is awesome. Any Anything else that you want to say? Live uh, AFK. AFK. Yes, uh, we are uh, all waiting for the next uh, the next set of Keyforge. We are very really exciting about, but uh, for the moment, yes, the community is uh, waiting. He's more waiting for the next set. But a uh, few of us are uh, joined the in uh, Kiev uh, Kiev League, the Norway Keyforge League, uh, yes. with yeah. more than one hundred and twenty person. I think yes, it will be it will be great. Yeah. And uh, yes, we have uh, five of us, I think, in, uh, in the last, um, in the next season, for the, but in the last uh, range, in the last um, level of the league. But uh, I know some of us will uh, go up for next season, I hope. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, and I know, uh, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure the most of the AFK people won't stay in Iron and Clay for too long. And uh, thank you again from, uh, for the streaming and for this great event that is uh, Kagi, uh, Kagi League. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Zach, and thank you so much for, you know, doing all the you know work behind the scenes on the streams and you know being a consistent um, host and commentator for for Kogi throughout the seasons. And I can't wait for all the futures to come. Thank you, and uh, make sure you watch uh, Murph's channel too, which is Twitch.tv slash Fudgenator. He was streaming a lot of Kogi through the season, including some yep. of the quarterfinal and semifinal matches. Um, so make sure to check him out as well does a great job organizing a lot of different things within the community um, thank you i think um one thing i will be doing is on the on the league document on kagi league document there is a section at the bottom which has a link to off to a playlist for all the kagi top cut coverage um i recommend going there and checking out all of them they're all fantastic games and i'll be making sure to make a, a playlist for this season as well and we'll get that up there and update it yeah, and thanks to just all the amazing players of Kagi because you guys make this this league so awesome. Uh, the skill and and dedication and your great gameplay is what makes this league so so awesome. Yep, this this game does not exist without its players, and it's it, they, they are the reason why Keyforge is such an amazing game. All right, uh, anything else that you want to say, Murph? That is it for me. I want to say thank you to all the players. Thank you for everyone who came out and played in Kagi 6.0. Thank you for making my first season being the organizer easy. Thank you for making it fun. Thank you for, for filling this entire time with great games and a great community. So I can't wait to see as many of you back in Kagi 7.0. And I'm hoping to see some new phases in Kagi 7.0 as well. And look out for those signups later in the week. Excellent. You heard him. Hashtag Kagi. Get there for the Kagi 7 signups later this week. We're excited. And with yes. that, thanks everybody for I watching. Will... Yeah, go ahead. I will sign and uh, sign uh, everybody has to be signed, even if you do if you are a new player or something like that. It uh, doesn't matter. Just join us. It's uh, the best. Uh... Excellent. The best it event. is the best. Yeah, and I think uh, you know Kagi Kagi is quite literally um what I started with in Keyforge as terms of online leagues. And I think it is it is not a small reason for why I'm why I love this game so much and why I got so into the online competitive scene was Kagi. Yeah, and thanks for your time, Ashitaka. Um congrats Thank on you. another very strong finish and uh good luck in, in KFL. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See ya. All right. And thanks everybody for watching. Another exciting Kagi finals. Looking forward again to next season. Uh, and we'll see you around. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zoc, for hosting. Yep. For John and Prosper. Thanks Bye, for everyone. the follow, Fabulousine. Nice to see you. All right. Take care. Pulling up outro music now.